Imagine this, you're injured, cold, and hungry. Your vision starts to get blurry as you start to lose consciousness. It's starting to get dark, so you know that the threads of the night are coming. Suddenly you feel a sense of warmth on your skin and a faint light coming up from ahead. You think it's just a hallucination, but then you hear a familiar voice. It's me! Hi, I'm, I'm the familiar voice. Welcome to my shop! <laughs> One of my favorite things about video games is the item shops. Vast stores that are filled to the brim with items, resources, and sometimes more game content all in one homey little area. I feel like the amount of time and effort game designers put into something like the item shop is something that not a lot of players realize often. It takes a lot of thought to make a decent shop for all your character and adventure needs. So. I wanted to talk about what makes the item shop in video games so impressive and memorable. And by the end of this video, you'll get to see my take on a video game item shop. So without further ado, this is what makes item shops so beautiful. So whenever game designers are making an item shop for their game, the first question they need to answer is how they want to implement it into the story. Do they want it to be from a character or an existing business in the story? Is the shop owned by one person or multiple? Through my experience, game designers have always found amazing ways to implement their shop into the story and world of the game. The best example of this I can find is Beetle from Breath of the Wild. While he isn't an item shop in the traditional sense, I would definitely consider him one. He walks around all over Hyrule collecting things and putting them in his bag and acts as a wandering trader for Link to stumble upon any time he needs something from this region or another. I consider him a perfect example of world building because his identity as a character shows the majesty of the world that you're in. He loves walking around and exploring the world just as much as we do, and he values the things that he's discovered. You see this man strolling on the road, and you see his backpack, and you think, yeah, this man has been places. Item shots add little hints of the world around you to show what exactly it has to offer. Even if it's something you don't know about, you are enticed by the object, and it makes you want to explore more and get more bang for your buck. Oh, what's this thing do? Oh, you say I can get more of them by that forest? Well, golly gosh, I better get my tuchus down to that forest for more of these bad boys. <laughs> Another reason I think it adds more world building is how, in most cases, it's a form of safety for the player. Most item shops are accessible when you are not in danger currently or in between sources of danger, like between levels. This not only shows the majesty of how amazing the item shop is, but it also adds to the weight of the threat that you're dealing with. Something pretty heavy must be going down if I'm seeking shelter from this literal dog with human hair. Even the vibe of the shop is just so soothing. Usually it's well lit with nice decorations and furniture, there are no loud noises or commotion, it's just you and the shopkeeper. Speaking of the shopkeepers, that is another one of my points when it comes to world building. Item shops can generate some of the most memorable and charismatic secondary characters in a game, hands down. Since game designers don't need to create a nail-biting story for the item shop owner, they can put more effort into design and personality. They can be cutthroat, hospitable, or just outright weird. However, it's always done amazingly. I have never in my years of gaming met a shop owner that I didn't like. Like Cuphead, where you go into Pork Run Shop. As soon as I saw him, I thought, I want to know this man's whole story right now. One more way it adds world building while also mixing a little into the game mechanics is when you see the vast variety of things in the shop. It gives you a hint of the potential of the player character. Soon, with a little bit of time and effort and money, the player will be able to obtain these tools and become even more powerful. Like, have you ever played a game and seen an extremely expensive item in the shop and it's super useful so you start saving up for it? That feeling of joy when you finally get a super useful item and become a force of nature is extremely cathartic. While some aspects of the item shop are a good mix of gameplay and world building, these swords also have great mechanics on their own. So that's what I wanted to talk about next. In a playstyle sense, the item shop adds a ton of variety. For one, it adds a good balance of power and challenge. And what I mean by that is that if you were given all of these important items and tools off the bat, the game would be way too easy. So they gotta put it behind some kind of paywall so that you have something to strive towards in order to get stronger. 
That's where the challenge comes in. You gotta grind and put yourself through dangerous scenarios to get to that point. It requires you to do some grinding, and for some people, like me, we actually enjoy farming and grinding because we know the satisfaction of obtaining the reward, but also the satisfaction of just getting a little bit closer to that goal with every coin or material you collect. Another aspect the item shop gives players is if you are one who loves 100%ing games and gets either all the items or the same items, but 99 of them. For the hardcore players, the item shop gives them the means to go above and beyond and achieve the hardest feats in the games. Sometimes you even get a reward for buying everything in their store, like Hestu from Breath of the Wild and his golden Korok poop. Thanks, dude. So I think I've gotten the point across that I love item shops in video games, but I want to take this opportunity to make my own item shop. So after some thinking, brainstorming, and drawing, I have created my own item shop pitch. So let's go back to that scenario from the intro. You're back in a cold, dark forest. You're injured and limping in a haze. You don't know how you're going to get out of this mess. Suddenly, you come to a clearing and see a small source of light and a loud horn sound. Is that a train? You get closer to the first train car, and suddenly... Hello, my worn-out fellow. You seem you've been swimming through the gutter or a rough night on the town. How about a pick-me-up from one of our many shops? <laughs> God, that was a terrible voice. <laughs> so yeah, this is my item shop character. His name is Jack Joseph, nicknamed JJ. He's an old 1930s robot with the head that can rotate his face to change his expressions. He is the owner of the Lucky Locomotive, the item shop in this hypothetical game. Each train car sells a different kind of item, and every time you change between the cars, he follows and his expression changes depending on which car you're in. He sells everything from weapons to clothes to health items to side quests. Every car fits a kind of old bar or saloon theme that I think turned out pretty good. This is just a concept, I don't have any final images or mockups, but if I continue this video in some way, then I might go a little deeper into this idea. But for now, that's all I got, and that's it for the video. In conclusion, item shops in video games are one of my favorite aspects of gaming, and I hope I helped you appreciate how much they do for the quality of a game, and how much love game designers put into something that, while you don't spend much time in, is still a crucial part in many games to this day. I want to thank you for watching this video. It's been a while since I've done a full scripted retrospective and I hope you enjoyed it. Do you have a favorite item shop for video games? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe too if you want. Make sure to check out my socials in the descriptions for updates on when I post and also have a say in what kind of videos I make. I also post my art on there so go give it a follow. Thank you for watching and in the meantime make sure to relax today.